So you've gone over to D&D Beyond, right? You've canceled your subscription. You've, uh, you've watched all the videos on YouTube talking about how bad the OGL 1.1 is. And, um, you know, we've, we've made our voices heard. And uh, we've been loud about it. And they're listening to us, right? And the OGL is somewhat safe for now, right? Um, and uh, uh, Paizo has uh, stepped up to bat. And they're going to protect the OGL. And they are uh, they're going to uh, make a real open RPG creative license for everyone and anyone to use that's going to be untouchable, bulletproof for... Eternity owned by a nonprofit, and um, like things are things are sort of safe for now, right? And there's a little silver lining to this cloud. All of these indie um, games and indie publishers are maybe they're going to get a little bit of sunshine, right, to their games and their content. So that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to go out and burn all of your D&D books. Um, what I will tell you to do, though, is um, check out some of these other games. So um, say that, first off, that you want to just, you want to keep playing D&D, right? Say that you like 5e. There's a lot of people that like 5e. 5e, 5e is a great system. You know, don't go out and burn your player's handbook, your, you know, your... Uh, whatever, uh, do cancel your D&D Beyond subscription, sorry to say. But um, if you want to keep playing 5e, um, check out some of this stuff, right? So what I, what I want to do is um, I want to highlight some of these publishers, uh, these uh, uh, publishers that have kind of stepped up to go to bat for us and protect the OGO or come up with a new one that's bulletproof, uh, like Paizo, Cobalt Press, Chaosium, Green Ronin, Legendary Games, Rogue Genius Games. Um, and I just wanna, uh, I wanna recommend one title, of, or one book from each of these publishers that you could check out if you wanna go over to their um, RPG drive through page and check out some of what they have to offer, right? So um, first up, let's uh, let's take a look at uh, Cobalt Press. So first off, um, when I started looking at uh, Cobalt Press's page, um, I had no idea just what a prolific publisher they were. I mean, they 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 write so many books; it's crazy. Like. Uh, they've got to be putting out at least five times as many books as as Watsi is. Maybe they're right to feel threatened by these guys um, because they are just writing so much stuff. There is so many like uh, settings and adventures and uh, like monster manuals and just like you name it. And so far everything that I've seen in here is um, it's going to be either Pathfinder or 5e. Okay, well, I take it back. Here's a here's a 13th age uh, thing, and um, but like it looks like the lion's share of this stuff is um, either going to be 5e compatible or Pathfinder compatible, right? But there's just like pages and pages and pages. There's so much, so many books here. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to recommend one title to you, and um, uh, all each of these books are they're either going to be something that I'm really interested in, uh, something that uh, that I just think is is you know it's a it's a really cool setting or just a really cool book, or something that one of my friends uh, w one of the books that they've recommended to me that they think is really cool. Um, and uh, so this so this first one is going to be something that was recommended to me by a guy that I play with, um, and um, he's actually Norwegian, um, and, but he was, uh, um, he was really interested in this um, Midgard book that uh, Cobalt Press did, 
and it's set in a it's it's this is a so this is like its own kind of world its own setting for uh, 5e so you know if you want to just keep playing 5e but you want to support some of these other publishers and you want to pick up a, you know a, a book a really cool book um, that uh, you know it's just a really cool setting um, this is just this is going to be an extra setting for you uh, so it's definitely you know it's inspired by like Nordic kind of like Vikings and you know like Thor and all that stuff like and John would kill me right and I'd be like be like you're you're insulting my culture um, but uh, so the uh, there's there's a lot of cool stuff in this book um, you know it's a really interesting world it's like there's these um, struggles between the giants and the dragons that it, like this is this sort of kind of like a almost like a dark age setting where um, it's like there's there's elves and um, like elf elf culture is a thing but it's sort of like in decline um, humans have you know like they've um, overtaken a lot of this a lot of the places that used to be like occupied by elves and elves they're almost sort of more like the romans in this setting and if this was like maybe like mid medieval like dark age europe um or uh, dark age like um you know uh what do you call it <laughs> like norway sweden denmark you know like um the uh the the frozen north um but uh like they the elves like built all the roads and um they have sort of less they left a lasting impact on the world but their society is sort of in decline and then there's other races and um uh like um alliances that have sort of risen up and uh taken power like um uh, vampire kingdoms and uh, there's all kinds of things that are kind of going on um, between like half half human, half vampire, uh, like Dom Fear. And um, there's uh, this is one of the things that I love about this setting is that um, there's it has all kinds of different um, playable races. And uh, it gives like lots and lots of um, kind of background about like what's going on with these different tribes and like say that you wanted to play a bear a bear folk you know like what's happening with the the bear folk in this world or if you wanted to play a uh, a centaur or um a uh, you know a, a a half half human half uh, vamp vampire domfear uh and you know dwarves and um but uh let me show you a cool one, um, the uh, the rat folk. So I, I personally, I know a guy who would absolutely 100% jump on the chance to play a rat folk, like, Skaven character in a D&D &D campaign. And, um, you know, this is just going to give you another option. Uh, like, let me just, I'll just show you some of this stuff, like, if you want to play a rat folk, your dexterity score increases by two, your intelligence score increases by one, but your strength score reduces by two. Um, you uh, you get uh, pack pack tactics. Um, you know uh, the common like you you know that's that's the language that you would kind of speak or like I don't know let's say like maybe under common or something like that too. But you know if you wanted to play a like a a rat folk, a, a skaven. Um, this is this is like the the setting for you. I think it's a really really cool setting. Like, um, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, there are some some really really good um, official like D and D five e settings. Like, um, you know, personally, I think like Ravenloft. Um, uh, you know, like. Uh, Oh, what's this, what's it called? Um, oh, why am I drawing a blank on this? Curse of Strahd. Curse of Strahd, you know, phenomenal setting, phenomenal adventure, like the the premier, um, like number one, probably 5e setting, everybody's favorite. 
great, right? And like um, the, I would say like, personally, I love um, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. I thought Rhyme of the Frost Maiden was fantastic. Most of, you know, like most of the other ones, I think that these, these are going to be better. Like I, I love Waterdeep, right? Waterdeep is great. But like a lot of these indie settings, they just, um, they're just more interesting. You know, they have a lot more depth and they're, they're just uh, not, not so generic. You know, it's almost like they put a little bit more thought and love into the uh, settings, right? So I'm not going to go into too, too much detail on these books. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to kind of glaze over the top of them and show you a little bit of just what I thought was cool about some of these different books and um, just give you a, a few suggestions, right? Okay, uh, Free League, next up. Um, so Free League, another prolific publisher, um, you know, lots and lots of, of cool IPs, uh, Blade Runner, Alien RPG, Forbidden Lands, Mork Borg, you know, um, the new cyberpunk version of Mork Borg, uh, Twilight 2000, uh, you know, Tales from the Loop. Uh, there's, there's so many different um, great IPs that are under the um, the free league umbrella, right? Um, and you might expect me to recommend Alien RPG, and I will recommend Alien RPG to you. It's awesome. Try it. It's super fun. Um, but my suggestion for free league is actually a little bit out of left field. Um, so this is going to be another one of those books where. Uh, um, if you wanted to just keep playing 5e, but you wanted to try a new, really cool, interesting setting for 5e, um, this is going to be a, another option where, you know, like you're, you're not going to have to devote the headspace to learning a new rule set. Um, it's a, you know, it's a rule set that you know and you like and you, you want to keep playing. Um, I'm going to recommend uh, Ruins of Simbarum. And um, so Ruins of Simbarum or uh, uh, Simbarum was, it's, it is a Swedish RPG. And um, I think that it was published by somebody else originally. And then Free League got the rights to it and they published it in English. And then... Um, they uh, they may have done a another like another version that's age system. I think, I'm not sure. It's, no, I'm thinking of uh, age is some something else. Um, but what this is is this is the the five E version of of Simbarum that um, that Free League is is publishing right. So um, this is a it's. Um, it's a very dark, kind of grown-up, gritty uh, setting that it, it sort of resembles, you know, once again, like kind of dark age Europe. Um, and there's, uh, it's a really, really cool setting. I'm just gonna read. I'm just gonna read some 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 of this stuff to you about the the setting, right? So um, the setting for Ruins of Simbarum is the Northern Lands where that ancient empire once ruled, now consumed by the dark forest of Davakar and peopled by barbarian tribes of humans, stray goblins, massive ogres, dangerous elves, hungry trolls, and mysterious dwarves. Only recently has human civilization returned to the Northlands, years after defeating the Dark Lords. Queen Corinthia has decided to guide her people to their ancestral homelands. The South was destroyed. Tens of thousands had died. The maimed and broken were beyond count. The land was ra ravaged by death magic. There was famine and infertility. <laughs> um, and this all occurred 200 years ago. Um, and there's, uh, you know, blood magic. There's a, uh, there's a, a mysterious uh, bleeding disease that's like wiped out tens of thousands of people. Um, obviously, 
this is a little bit more dark, you know, kind of adult uh, setting for your 5e game. <laughs> this is the kind of setting that uh, wizards would never do um, because it's it's just it's just too dark, too gritty, too adult. It has too much flavor. Um, it's uh, not cartoony and insipid and vapid. Um, so I absolutely love um, the artwork in this book. And uh, I think that if you're going to run a campaign, right, um, you need to sort of get you need to get like motivated, you know, like you need to get pumped to to do it, to uh, to run it, right? And I just think that this is like just a it's a it's a really interesting setting, and um, I just you know I I feel really inspired looking at it, and I just think it's really really cool. Um, you know, does it add a lot of like different? Uh, new playable fantasy races you know no um uh like are you maybe gonna have to like talk to your players and talk them into making talk them out of making like clockwork um artificers you know and and stuff like that like have to find something that sort of fits in with the setting you know yeah maybe like um but uh but like even just for like inspiration, you know, as a setting, uh, just looking at the artwork, like gets me pumped where, you know, I, uh, I'm really interested in this setting. So, so my, my recommendation for Free League is going to be, um, Ruins of Simbarum and, um, they, uh, the, what, what we're looking at right now is also the, um, the free, sort of like teaser um and um the uh the the book itself um just finished a like a kickstarter so i don't even know if like the you can order i think it's on like amazon and it might not be on here it might not be on drive through rpg in pdf format yet but um but i would say you know check out the free uh, like teaser book for uh, Ruins of Simbarum and also check out Alien RPG and uh, maybe Mutant Year Zero. Okay, so Legendary Games. Um, Legendary Games is another one of those uh, publishers that is going to publish a lot of third-party content for... Um, Let's see, we've got uh, Starfinder, we've got some Savage Worlds, um, you know, obviously like f 5e. Um, so, and you know, like Pathfinder, uh, Starfinder. Um, so let's say that um, you wanted to run a 5e campaign with um, some aliens in it. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they've got you covered. They, you know, they they have a um, an alien bestiary for Five uh, E or Starfinder, um, and uh, you know, like alien alien civilizations uh, codexes and stuff like that, right? So um, I'll show you another free book. Um, this is just this is another one of like a little uh, a teaser, um, but you can kind of like check out their. Um, their their content like what kind of uh books they're putting out there and like see like kind of like the quality of the writing and illustrations and you know all that um let's take a look at this um uh asian monsters um bestiary so um <clears throat> we've got uh it's you know, if you don't if you don't know what what a, a bestiary like, it's like a, a a monster manual, right? So this is just gonna give you some some options, some things that you can add to your game if you're running like a um, a Japanese kind of uh, inspired campaign, or or I guess well I guess this is just generic Asian, 
but uh yeah the artwork is you know it's really nice um there's some really you know interesting uh monsters in here and like you know i have i have have heard people say that sometimes these um these monsters monster manuals from third party creators can be kind of hit or miss um but like sometimes you come across stuff that's like gold where <laughs> um it's just like the coolest monster you know they they do like the most interesting things um like uh, i i i kind of like this um this is like this is uh i think this is a japanese ghost um that uh tries to drown people you know and has like the the hair like wraps up people in their hair and uh maybe find it in in a, a place where somebody uh is still connected to their suicide or something like that um but uh but yeah i would say um check out some of their uh like monster manuals and they seem to have you know a lot of a lot of third party content but um uh a lot of um different kinds of uh monster manuals okay uh rogue genius games right um again tons and tons of uh of content um there's just a lot of stuff here we got stuff for mutants and masterminds we got stuff for starfinder pathfinder um you know obviously there's going to be 5e um ogl modern i think that's going to be like d20 modern um anachronistic adventures let's see do we have any like 13th age or um stock art all kinds of stuff um so um again this is going to be another another third party publisher the, the, the these guys have a ton of uh free content um like uh let's see we've if we go over here to the um got a 52 in 52 um free teaser like trailer thing uh which is pay what you want um for all kinds of th things so Every one of our 52 products is presented in four versions to cover uh, four popular game systems, Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2E, Starfinder, and, and 5E. Um, they also just have like uh, some options for like, uh, let's see, we've got um, hoof and horn racial options. <laughs> um, got wind and wing racial options uh and this stuff is all just uh free um as well as like stuff that's like 25 cents or uh 50 cents there's something for 50 cents that has five stars uh the theta files provides illustration game stacks and game stats and background for heroes and villains you can drop directly into your third edition of mutants and Mind masterminds cap campaign So we're going up in price, but uh, we're, there's still just like tons and tons of stuff that's under a buck. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So there's a lot of stuff to check out here for free or next to free. If you want to check out Rogue Genius Games. Okay, and... Uh, getting into the games that move away from 5e. Uh, Pathfinder, right? You knew it was going to be on the list. <laughs> it's probably on the thumbnail. Um, yeah, Pathfinder, probably the, uh, the number one competitor to 5e. Um, if you, you know, if you want to go out and find a game to play, it's really, really easy to find a Pathfinder game if you don't don't want to play 5e anymore. Um, so one thing I, I will say about Pathfinder, um, so if you go over to uh, Paizo's website right now, um, everything is going to be 25% um, off 
if you use the um, there's a um, there's a code that you put into the checkout like something that you that you uh, plug in and um, you can get um, uh, any any you know Pathfinder books Paizo books for uh, twenty five percent off, and that code is uh, hashtag Open Gaming. <laughs> so, um, but I'm not actually going to recommend a book to you. I'm going to give you something for free, or or show you something for free, which is the. Um, uh, the Pathfinder uh, second edition SRD. So say that you wanted to um, check out the rules for Pathfinder. If you wanted to just you know look at how the rules work and and decide if it's going to work for you or not, right? Um, I think that Pathfinder is it's a more granular game than 5e it's 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 almost like a level of complexity higher um i you know like when i was a kid they used to have D, &D and then advanced D, D. and like i would almost compare pathfinder to like advanced 5e because there's so much more stuff that you can do and you know it, it is more complicated, and like combat and things like that are are more granular. Um, like um, for instance, um, people get uh, people get multiple actions in a turn, but there's going to be things that you can do that um, it's going to be familiar to you if you know how to play Five E, um, but it's it adds it adds a lot of depth to like combat in 5e like um say that uh so you have your standard actions and then you have your your move action and then you have your like combat action your spell or, or whatever um there's going to be a lot of other things that you can do like uh just as an example with your move action um, you can use your move action to like manipulate an object. Like say that you wanted to open a door, you know, or like pick something up or um, there's going to be like short actions and like, you know, reactions and um, like a, you could use your move action to move five feet without taking an attack of opportunity where you're not disengaging, you're not using a main action to disengage but you're just moving away five feet or you can use like a short action to try and grapple somebody or you can use your like acrobatics skill to do something special in combat and then there's other things too like um, uh, if you have like a really really high dex you know if, or um, if you're like playing a monk or, or something like that or some kind of a dex based character you're going to get a bonus to your AC um, based upon your um, your dexterity, and uh, you. Um, but you're also going to get a negative if you wear like too hot, too heavy of armor. So if you don't have the strength to uh, to carry your your heavy armor around, and you're a more dexterous character, you're going to lose the bonuses from being like wiry and nimble. Um, so. You know, I, 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 I will warn you that it's a more complicated game. It's a more granular game. Um, if you are a munchkin who wants to power game and you want to really get into like the nitty gritty of how to do the absolute most damage with that sneak attack, um, you know, multi-class, um, it's like whatever critical hit, you know, you could go down a rabbit hole with that with like spreadsheets and stuff and and Pathfinder has got you covered if you if you thought that D&D &D was not complex enough and every other level so first level you get a feat third level you get a feat fifth level and so on and so on uh, every level you're you're gonna get 
a feat and then you get racial feats to begin with so i would say it's it's a more complicated game um it's a little bit more advanced but people that play it love it and there's a lot of people that play it so you know um i will send you or i'll, I'll put a, a link down here for the um the pathfinder 2e srd and you can check it out and see what you think for free okay so green ronin publishing um this is going to be another one of the publishers that uses the ogo like in their books um you know i i found it in here <laughs> um so yeah uh green ronin another um another publisher with some really cool ips um the you know the expanse um dragon age and um they they're the makers of the uh, age system i forgot what that stands for um they do have some crazy deals going on right now um like let's see there's a a mega bundle a pdf mega bundle and this looks like it carries everything from uh skull and bones eternal roam mutants and masterminds like uh just like you name it like everything that they publish there is just going to be a ton of stuff in here uh for like age system and uh a d20 I think age system is a d20 system that it's going to feel very familiar to you it's going to feel very similar um if you know how to play dnd again right like dragon age i know for for sure for certain is um it's a d20 you know system and it's going to feel very very similar to uh dnd based on the uh based on the srd you know based on the ogl um so the book that I'm going to recommend, though, to you is a book that somebody else recommended to me, um, uh, Mutants and Masterminds. So Mutants and Masterminds is another one of those really popular systems where it's not going to be hard for you to find um, a game of Mutants and Masterminds to play. There's a, you know, there's a lot of people that really like this game. Um, one of my friends who, you know, we play... Uh, Stars Without Number, we play D&D, &D, and, you know, we play, like, I have not tried this yet, but he loves this system. Um, for him, it's his absolute favorite system, and he's played a lot of games, you know, he's played a lot of different things. Um, like, I know for a fact that they've done, like, Fate and, you know, like, Vampire and, like, all kinds of different games. He runs Mutants and Masterminds. Um, Mutants and Masterminds is his, um, his, his favorite system. So, um, if you, if you crack open Mutants and Masterminds, right, um, I don't have a PDF of this, I, I, I have the book, um, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to feel very familiar, um, like you're going to have your, you know, your skill checks and everything is going to be like you know you're you're gonna have your skill checks that are gonna have dcs connected to them that are based on your skills you know with your modifiers and it's got the uh you've got the standard um uh stats and like strength agility um stamina dexterity intellect but also like adds some stuff like um Fighting, awareness, presence, dodge, parry, fortitude, um, toughness, and um, willpower. Um, so there's there's some things like if you take a look at the character sheet, I might have to scan some stuff in because uh, I just don't have the, the PDF of this to look at. Um, there's some of the stuff that's going to feel like a little bit simplified um, because, you know, again, like, this is another game that, uh, like, I'm looking at it right here. It's got the open gaming license back here in the back of the book. Um, the 1.0. Because I'm pretty sure that this was 3.5. You know, like, this was a game that was based on the 3.5 um, SRD. And then it's on its third edition now. 
and things have gotten more and more different, you know, as, as time has gone on. So um, there's going to be a lot of stuff that feels very, very familiar. But then there's going to be some things that are different, like um, typically in Mutants and Masterminds, everything is a d20. Um, you might use a percentile dice. Um, there are some things like uh, there's, there's uh, you get like hero points and um, like effort, you know, points where you can kind of push fate or like do something really heroic and um, like sort of sw swing the odds in your favor a little bit. And then you're going to take some strain or, you know, like um, the, uh, the DM is going to get, you know, like a pool of their own um, that uh, can kind of like change some encounters. Like you're, you're making things go your way in one encounter and then maybe there's going to be a nasty fight that's coming up that isn't going to go your way, right? Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, Mutants and Masterminds, um, again, it's it's I think that it it's the target demographic is a little bit different like I think it's supposed to be a little bit more like kid friendly um you can play in um different ages so like um say that you wanted to do like a Batman kind of campaign and you're just kind of like a, a crime fighter who is um uh, foiling like bank robberies and you want to do that in like the uh, the 1920s right um, you could do that and then and then have like a very low kind of superpower rating and the like the more like high level your character is or whatever the more kind of like Superman like you get um, or like Homelander, you know, if you wanted to, to play a, um, a campaign that's more like that. Um, or if you want to play more of like a classic like X-Men kind of game where, um, you know, you want to make a, a Cyclops and a Kitty Pride and a Nightcrawler and um, stuff like that and uh, play in a system like that. I would say that this is definitely the game for you if you want to play a superhero game and then set it in like, you know, Golden Age of Comics or like classic Batman or like a Superman, you know, like the boys. Um, uh, like if you if you want to play a super superhero game, this is a great system, um, but it's going to it is going to feel a little bit different. It's going to feel a little bit different from from what you're used to if you're used to playing 5e but still not going to take that much headspace like you you've you've got most of it already like it's most of it is already up there if you know how to play 5e so i'm going to recommend uh, mutants and masterminds okay and finally last but not least chaosium so um uh yeah if you didn't know um, back in the 80s, RuneQuest used to be like the number one kind of competitor for D&D. &D. Like, you know, there was D&D there was &D and then there was RuneQuest, both very popular games. Um, but, you know, since then, um, Call of Cthulhu has grown and grown and grown and grown. And um, Chaosium also has their own SRD. And... Um, they uh yeah if you if you want to go out and play some uh call of cthulhu games they um you can you can play call of cthulhu games that are published by chaosium or you can play call of cthulhu games that are published by other people too um but what i will tell you is to get the um call of cthulhu starter set um for 99 cents and uh that's you know, on sale from $9.99, but um, this is going to give you like a starting adventure and, um, but it's, you know, it's going to give you um, like a good feel of um, what, uh, what Call of Cthulhu plays like, 
right? And, and kind of give you like some, some rules and an adventure. And um, Cthulhu is, it's, it's not that intimidating of a game. Um, like it, the, it's, it's, it plays pretty simply, like it uses a percentile system and then um, if we go down and, and like look at um, like character sheets and stuff like that, um, let's see. There's some, you know, there's some stuff that, that I, I kind of like about this. Like, okay, if you're rolling damage, right? Uh, minor, roll a 1d3. A person could survive numerous occurrences of this level of damage. Um, deadly. <laughs> 2d10 <laughs> uh, the person maybe has a 50 for 50 chance of dying examples being hit by a car at 30 miles an hour being three to six yards away from an exploding hand grenade or stick of dynamite uh, a strong poison and then uh, splat outright death is almost certain being involved in a high-speed head-on collision being hit by a train <laughs> 8d10 um, you know, Call of Cthulhu is famous for having the uh, the sanity mechanic, where um, you have a high chance of your characters just going completely insane. Um, there, it's also um, a super deadly um, has a, has a reputation for being a very very deadly game, um, but that's part of the fun of it is embracing like the last moments of your your characters lives and <laughs> um just you know seeing how all of that played out in in an in an adventure adventurous fashion right um so call of cthulhu is going to give you all kinds of different options for um settings um personally like there's you know there's like Paul Cthulhu which makes your characters a little bit more heroic the class of Call of Cthulhu is in like the 1920s kind of setting and then there's more like um modern uh settings like um the uh one of the really popular ones that is not published by Chaosium um but that people love is uh Delta Green and um Delta Green is a modern Cthulhu, um, but uh, Delta Green is a special branch of the FBI that goes after like supernatural um, eldritch horrors uh, in a modern setting. And they were the uh, originally founded by the um, team of FBI agents that were called in to the town of Innsmouth, if you know the, the story of um, Innsmouth, which apparently is some kind of horrible racist metaphor, but you know, like getting past that, we still love H.P. Lovecraft stuff. Um, the, the Delta Green is the branch of the FBI that was established when the FBI raided the town of Innsmouth and took out the Eldritch Horror that was in the town of Innsmouth. And, um, just on like a you know on an aside uh a game that i have really really wanted to try um that uh i have considered learning call of cthulhu um pretty much just so that i could run this game it's a very adult you know kind of themed game um but uh just to kind of give you guys a little bit of background um you are a group of paranormal investigators who run a YouTube channel, um, like a streaming service, and um, the uh, the crew goes out to investigate a an island off the coast of Italy that is uh, supposedly haunted, and um, it's the home of a um, a cult that was treating people on the island um sort of feeding sick people to this uh to this eldritch horror that um feeds on uh sickness and um the uh the crew being there at this um um at this you know this location at this time 
is uh, is it sort of sets things in motion that um, like is the last piece of this plan to, of this uh, this cult that's been trying to summon this um, elder god back to the earthly plane um, and uh, there's all kinds of mechanics like one of the people on the crew is an ex heroin addict and then they find some drugs and they're very tempted to do the drugs and then you know it's possible that maybe the drugs like sort of poison their mind and then make them do things that work against the other um, the other players and stuff like that and you know like more of an adult game um, and also you know combat is like super super deadly and um, there's a lot more like investigating there's a lot more skill checks there's a lot more um, things you know that are like mm, like not not quite so much like like beat em up you know dungeon dungeon diving but more like kind of like um adult like role playing and that didn't come out right but you know you get the idea it's a slightly more adult game and like you know maybe uh maybe you and your group are ready to kind of like try some new things that are slightly more adult none of this is coming out right okay so anyways I will recommend those games to you and a lot of them you know are like either free or they're like 99 cents or you know if you if you just want to like check these companies out and see what they're about you know or like just buy like a book that you can put on your bookshelf that's going to give you inspiration um, you know check it out so anyways those are going to be my recommendations to check out some of these great companies that are standing up to <laughs> uh, Wizards of the Coast right now and their horrible, horrible, money-grubbing uh, bullshit. So, yeah, take care of yourselves, have a better one, and I will see you in the next one.